Okay. We're back and we are gonna go and fine tune our system a bit more. So remember, we are in virtual box, so we don't need, so we don't uh, need to, we're not alarmed when we see this red thing here at the bottom. So let's first uh, do things, the, the main, yeah, the, always the same thing we have to do when we install Linux Mint. We go down here, we get our Google, and then here, add to Google, change search settings, up, remove, 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 remove. And now we have our Google up here. So that's that. Uh, if we want to have our start page different, what I would like as well. Then we go to the preferences, use current page, and that's that. Now our little house here is our Google page. That's that. What's next to change when we press Windows Enter or Super Enter? You'll see that the terminal still has all these elements, which I do not like. So preferences, no menu bar in i3 and in profile preferences, I would go for custom font, a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm typing and commands, okay, colors, you can use the transparency the way you want, the way you see fit and scrolling, don't like the scrolling, I don't want to limit the scroll back, which is fine. Windows Shift Q kills everything and Windows Enter gives us back our uh, elements here. So what are we, what do we have here? We have a 4.4, we haven't upgraded to the 4.10, which is the current kernel at this point. Uh, do we have screen fetch? Let's try. Let's try. So it's not a an, uh, full installation starting from the GitHub from Eric Dubois. So screen fetch is not yet installed. So sudo apt install screen fetch. And let the thing do its job. So this program is installed, so now I can ask him, and there are lots of options you can put behind, like the minus P, so it's uh, the sign goes up, and uh, this is what we're working on. We're on i3, we have a specific R Dark Smoke, and Sardemono Numix Colora Vampire, that's all that. Well, those icons up here, those are the icons Sardi and Colora Vampire. So we have uh, different workspaces, 1, 2, 8, and 10. And you can uh, still need to log in here, have some music. But this is Nemo. We set Nemo the way we want, and that is, we add here some icons. And particularly this item icon is interesting because it opens the terminal where it is. So if you are if you are in music and you press here, then you are in music as well. So that's quite interesting. But you should know that this thing here is GNOME Terminal. So you should install GNOME Terminal, otherwise it will not work. You can also open things in a terminal, in, a, in root. This, for instance, is, is protected. So open as root. You get this pop-up. And then you say, OK, I want, I want to change this thing. This is normal that the design is broken. We are root now. And then you do your stuff and you get out of it. Beware and things changing in protected parts of your system. You see that you know what you're doing. Trash is red. We can empty the trash. And there you go. It's back to normal. These folders have come with the installation. When we installed it, we were installing here and we had these personal settings. So these bookmarks have been copied. That's the effect of the personal uh, copy here and this yellow thing is a thing we did have not done yet so we can decide to update and then uh, want to switch to a local mirror we can do so or we can say no it's okay it's just for a test don't suggest to switch to a local server or local mirror and carry on so install the updates as you can see everything works the pop-up comes and by the way it's the policy kit uh, that should pop up should do its thing if anything goes wrong that's the word you have to google and we're going to install a lot more as you can see and let him do its job 
like so. Then uh, what else can I tell you? What else can I tell you? My best advice would be to actually read. I know, to read. And you need to read not the Compton Conf, which is going to do these animations. So if you want to change the border here, the shadow uh, between the, the windows here, then you should get check this out, the fading and, and all that. That's this one. But this is the heart of i3. You sh really should read it and double clicking will now open it not in Sublime Text, which I would like, but he's opening it in something else. He's opening it in Xset, which is great, but it's not what I wanted. So I go back to number eight and I tell to the system open with. Yeah, let's wait for the installation here. I'm gonna push it anyway, so Windows Shift Enter. And there it is again. Installation is um, making it more difficult. Uh, what was I doing? So I wanted to go into i3 in the config right mouse click open with I want to do this but forever so other application sublime text forever set as default okay and now when I double click it it will be in here and let's zoom in so this is the thing you should read and from this block onwards here start of all the settings so this is what is what we used to get, what we did get and prior to our, our uh, investigations in all these codes and these are my personal settings so they may differ and also lots of explanations and um, well you should read it because i3 is a keyboard driven uh, shortcut that's why I put these things here super space and like for instance this one well, serenity and theaters okay fine Alt T, it works. Alt T is threshing the wallpaper. Alt T, I don't like the wallpaper. Give me the next wallpaper. Alt minus, Alt arrow, Alt P for previous, Alt N, uh, and, and, and so on. So all these shortcuts are in here. And this thing here works and moves about when you go with your mouse over it and also press the super key or the Windows key. And with Windows Shift, um, Spacebar. Then again, we have here this um, tiled window. This was a floating window. This is a tiled window, and this is a full window. Super F. So lots of shortcuts, and they're just in here. You just have to test them out and uh, try them. So it's a bit of reading, but once you get over that, you have the Windows D to Super D to have your menu and to say what was it again? It was Fire. Yeah, there's a program. Click and it's you started another Firefox instance. You can zoom in again, Windows Super F, or zoom out again. You can quit one of those, Super Shift Q. It's all in here. And there is another menu, which is Windows Shift D. I've made a completely different look, so you know that you're in another one, not in the regular Windows D, which is black, and this one is white, so we know it's another one. So it's the D menu this one desktop and um, lots of things that I've made like Control alt f is Firefox and, and Control alt g is, is GIMP and, and everything boots with shortcuts and um, it's up to you to discover and to learn where these shortcuts are, are. and that's it basically um, moving things from from and to can be also interesting so this one is a number eight maybe you would like this to move to workspace number two it's now on workspace number two we are here and maybe you want to turn workspace three so now it's in one two three is here and let's quit it and then eight is there and maybe you want another one next to the other one to compare and so on and so on. So there are a lot of things you can do with it and it feels quite, well, I, f I feel quite at home, but I do remember it, it has um, a steep learning curve. Put um, some time in it and then you'll, you'll benefit in the future. I can only advise you to give it a try. Bye for now.